Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, today is our pop-up call, if you will, to Christchurch. It was a surprise stop because we had other ports canceled, but we booked a shore excursion, the Lord of the Rings filming location uh, with lunch tour. And it's about $250 US. It's about nine hours long. And I'm gonna tell you, is do you think it's worth it? Uh, and what you're going to see. So our day starts out like most shore excursion days where we're in the theater. We get our little sticker for which shore excursion we're on. And then that's that long corridor walk down to get to the buses. And uh, yeah. It, the sun seemed to disappear on us all of a sudden. Where'd the uh, sun go, Tony? Oh, it was here a minute ago. <laughs> Maybe it's waiting for us at the shore here. Look at this guy coming in. Solid, dude. Then I got a chance to see some of those uh, offloading machines that they use here in New Zealand. They're pretty cool. I'd like to kind of drive one. I used to drive a forklift for a living and I think uh, I would enjoy driving those things just for fun. Then off we went, getting ready to head out and uh, what do we get right off the bat? Well, uh, well, we, we end up having to wait for a train to go by. Uh, and it was a, a, a long train, shall we say. <laughs> I, uh, I could sit here and just let this train run, uh, but um, let's just say it goes on and on and on and on. So instead, we'll hit the road, and we were hoping to see some really beautiful scenery of New Zealand. This is a three hour bus ride to get to our shore excursion with lunch included. And uh, we start off driving through the first city. Um, hear a lot about the earthquake. There was a big earthquake in 2010 and an even larger one in 2011 that destroyed so much of the buildings and made them redesign the entire city as well to the point where there's no structures uh, being built anymore above three stories. And then we hit the countryside hoping to see all these cow... Uh, no. We, we, we saw hedges. <laughs> Every time she'd say, something's on its way, take a look, and there'd be a hedge. And I'll be honest, I was quite worried that this would be the entire scenery we would end up seeing for three hour bus ride. But it finally did open up a little bit and we got to see some beautiful scenery. And if you'll notice, the sun started to peek out. We were getting excited. Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a clear day where we're going. Lots of farmland in this area, both uh, beef, dairy, sheep, goats, and deer is a new industry they've started up out here as well. First stop, we had a stop for tea and snacks, which was basically a little cupcake inside at this old war memorial type building where they'd set up here. We'd also come back here for lunch. There's not a whole lot around this area. It, there is a campsite next door where you can use the washrooms as well. I was surprised when I walked through here to find a full-size football rugby field. And that little building on the left, that's a museum. That's right, that's a museum there, but Lots of open space here, but like I said, not a lot around here to see. I was fascinated by these industrial looking urinals. It looked like cow troughs. And then back on the bus till our next stops. Now we had a couple of scenic stops. This little place here has all these little cottages that never go on sale because they are too valuable for people to get. Even if you were to be able to buy one and you want to change it, 
you could only build the exact footprint that's already there. And trust me, they rarely ever come for sale. They're handed down by generations to families. So took my selfies and then uh, off we went again. Here is our second stop, another scenic stop out here. As you can see, everybody's out there taking pictures. Beautiful scenery, um, absolutely gorgeous. So uh, yeah, it's starting to get nice. Now here's our main stop. This is the film location of the capital, I think it's Edoras, the capital of Rohan in the Lord of the Rings movies. Can you, can you make out the Lord of the Rings where, where it would be? Uh, this is the, the trick. So this is what it would look like in the film and they built all this on top. Of course, now it's all removed. To get a little closer, you have to walk over this bridge. Uh, supposed to be walking one person at a time. Obviously can hold more than one person. It's a very sturdy, strong bridge, but it does bounce up and down quite significantly. In fact, it even caught me off guard how much it moved when I get on there. But you do are supposed to walk one across at a time. And this can be a bit of a problem when you have four buses show up at the same time and everybody walks over and then you have another bus show up and they want to get over and the other bus wants to get back and you end up going one person at a time. Not exactly, uh, let's, let's just say it was time consuming. But here's the sign, maximum load, one person at a time. The scenery around here though was beautiful. You can see here, I'm looking out, okay, around on this side, there's a path you can walk up, but tourists on uh, guided excursions aren't allowed to go there, but I was comparing to what I remember from the movies. Oh, I remember that long path up the side, we would go up there, that's exactly what it would be. And I was trying to picture what it would have looked like when they were actually filming here, which would have been exciting. Now, if you're walking, watch out for these things. They are sharp. I barely touched one walking and there's a ton of it. And even through my pants uh, legs, I could feel it pricking at my legs. So if you're walking in shorts, you might know a little bit of pain. So I took some more pictures of the stream, beautiful scenery here. Again, very relaxing. The sun was out a little bit and uh, yeah, trying to imagine filming out here for over a year of filming at this location for 11 minutes of film time, which is kind of weird when you think of it. Took my last selfie uh, in front of it and uh, back on the buses, here we go, as more buses were beginning to arrive. And uh, yeah, time for that three hour bus ride back, but we were gonna have some lunch along the way. So we've stopped off here in a little town, back where we had our tea and muffin this morning for lunch. It's all set up with sandwiches and some desserts, some fruit, apples and bananas and some orange juice. And it's a nice little spread, but it's, I it's all different types of sandwiches and it's all like, most of it looked egg-based, egg salad-based and I'm not a big egg salad or egg based person. <laughs> so I just decided to come out, get some sun. After all, it's been raining for the last six days. So I thought, hey, get out a little, little sun, walk through the town a little bit. And just, yeah, just enjoy the scenery. In fact, it's finally so warm out. I finally got to take off my little jacket for the first time. Feels good. Feels good. Then back on the bus and heading home. This is the time where a lot of people were basically trying to sleep. They were so tired, but we took a different way home and set up a tunnel underneath the, the hill. We went along the shoreline and over the hill, and I was glad we did because it was really pretty. It's hard to see a lot of the locations through here uh, when you're traveling by bus, but it's a big surfing area and windsurfing, uh, a bunch of little 
uh, restaurants along here and a nice beautiful parks, playgrounds for the kids, a little exploratory cave area. And uh, yeah, and then we started climbing up into the hills. But look at those waves out there. There must be some amazing surfing and windsurfing out there. There are a few people out there. But uh, then we went up into the hill and we had some really breathtaking views down below on the way back to the port. Really much more scenic than the tunnel we took on the way here. If you're a little afraid of heights, there wasn't a whole lot of room here between the road in some places and falling down like, uh, I don't know, 800 yards <laughs> into the, to the ground below. As you can see here, we got the main port below us with all the containers which means we're getting a little bit closer. Uh, again, a much more scenic view coming back from this direction and off we can see just coming through the trees, there's the Noor Dam sitting there waiting for us to take us back towards Australia. But first, three more days at sea. So a few things, if you're in this just to see the filming location of Lord of the Rings, unless you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan and like that's your life kind of thing it you you might not get what you think you're going to get a lot of people go on these shore excursions and feel that oh you're going to see some of the buildings from the film you're going to see you know locations where there's going to be swords and you're going to see where the horses are and you're going to see it's not a filming location it's an old filming location that nothing is left so you're seeing oh we filmed it here um on this flat ground <laughs> or this rock. And that's what you're gonna see. Now, if you're in it to see the sights and the scenery as well as you know some of New Zealand, then you're gonna get more out of it. It's definitely worth more the money if that's what you're in for. If you're only into it because you're a big Lord of the Rings fan and you think this is gonna be ultimate filming location, there's no filming location. It's a site of land where a movie was shot over 20 years ago. <laughs> so. Uh, go with that. Go with that for now, if you will. And um, yeah, if you another thing is where you stop for lunch. Now they do a, a you know a pretty good job for the for the lunch and things like that. But you're gonna get uh, non-alcoholic champagne and you're gonna get orange juice for lunch. There's no uh, soda. There's nothing like that in there. You can't get any Diet Coke or anything like that. So you're pretty limited. And the sandwiches, everything, when I say egg-based, I mean egg-based. I mean, there was ham with egg on it. There was meat with egg on it. There was egg salad. It was. It seemed like everything had egg in it. And if that's not for you, you're not gonna enjoy lunch there. You'll probably enjoy the snacks of the muffins and those were good but these are all pre-packaged and sitting there waiting for you when you arrive just as a heads up you're not going to get a hamburger there's no buffet there's not even a store that you can walk to to go and get a soda if you wanted a soda there is a pub across the street uh, i didn't see anybody in there it is for sale i don't know how much longer that will be open so yeah uh, that way it was not terrific. Choice of food was not terrific, although most people seem to enjoy it. But as I said, not a big egg person and ham and egg or bologna and egg or whatever kind of meat that was with egg is not, is not something that looked good to me. Um, so I went out for a walk and we had some sunshine. So I got to see the sights. I'm glad we took that drive return over the hill and not through the tunnel again because it was much more scenic and got some really nice views from up there of the countryside. There is a lot of hedges along the way that do get in your way if you're trying to see the countryside, but once you get about halfway, it does open up more and you will see more of the scenery, especially as you get closer to the mountains. And if you're lucky enough, we got to see some of the mountains on the way out not on the way in, it clouded right over on us. And so we could only see the bottom, not near anywhere near the tops. But it opened it up quite a bit once we got into the location. We had some sunny skies, nice little walk. We were only there about 35 minutes at the filming location. Um, so if you're thinking that you can climb up and walk up to the top, 
you can't. Um, that is only for local residences and local travelers who have gotten permission to do that. If you're on a guided shore excursion or any kind of travel like that, like a bus, you can only go to the location we were at. There's a gate there, you're not allowed to go through. So if you're thinking you can walk up there and see the scenery from up there and where they actually filmed, you can't. So you will be looking at it from where you saw us looking at it down near the bottom. Is it worth $250? I'd say yes, if you wanted to get out and see the scenery. Just remember, you're gonna be on a bus for over six hours of traveling and uh, there is limited lunch. So bring some water with you, bring some soda with you, bring something. Uh, don't bring food because they check your bags quite often. And if you have anything that they say you can't have, like nuts or fruits or vegetables, it's an instant $400 fine in New Zealand. No, no, I'm sorry, I didn't know. 400 instant, no questions asked. So just remember that. Uh, find out what you are allowed to bring. Canned sodas are fine. Canned, like packaged chocolate would be okay. Uh, but other than that, uh, you're going to be having that muffin and you're going to be having some sort of egg sandwich, I guess. <laughs> and like I said, if you're only going for the Lord of the Rings and you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, unless that 35 minutes just at the bottom there interests you, uh, you might be a little disappointed because a lot of people think it's an actual film location studio. And it's not. It's a field where they filmed a movie at. <laughs> well, I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.